welcome back friends so currently we are in the last leg of uh, precedence diagram series so i have already explained about forward pass backward pass how to calculate early start early finish how to calculate late start late finish what is slack what is float what is total float what is free float so i have and what is what are, what is the structure of precedence diagramming method so in various videos i have explained that now i'll tell you about how to calculate total flow total slack and how to determine the critical path so with this i will be finishing the series of precedence, precedence diagramming method so first let me tell you about some of the definition like total float total float is amount of time that an activity can be delayed from its early start date without delaying the project finish date and free float is amount of time that activity can be delayed without delaying the early start date of any successor activity so guys try to understand the people get really get confused between these two terms like total float or free float so total float is activity can be delayed without delaying the project finish date however free float is activity can be delayed without delaying the early start of successor activity next activity so this is the main difference between total float and free float the critical path method is step by step project management technique for process planning that defines critical and non critical tasks with the goal of preventing timely delivery problem and process bottleneck if your project is on critical path you can understand you are really on critical path so in general shell the critical path is longest sequence of activities in a project plan which must be completed on time for the project to complete on due date so this is longest sequence of activities try to understand this longest sequence of activities longest duration any delay on critical path will delay your project for sure that's why the critical path is critical and very important again very familiar slide i had been using this slide in complete series of precedence diagramming method i have defined activities here predecessors and their duration and this is your favorable and favorite diagram using this chart this diagram i have already calculated the early uh, how to calculate early start early finish using forward path method how to calculate late start late finish using backward path method now i will calculate total float free float and identify the critical path okay so this way i calculated early start early finish this way i calculated late start late finish so both side we have already completed and now can you understand 0 minus 0 0 6 minus 6 equal to 0 Six minus six equal to zero. Eleven minus eleven equal to zero. Same here, it is zero. Same here, it is zero. So basically, late start minus late start minus uh, early start, or late finish minus early finish, the value gives you float. When I am coming to backward pass and using late start late finish or calculating late start late finish, then eight minus six two or fourteen minus twelve equal to two. Here also 14 minus 12, 2. 18 minus 16, 2. So when we calculate the float, it is early start, uh, late start minus early start, or late finish minus early finish. Now, guys, let me tell you what is this all about. Why your A, B, D, E is critical path? As I said, critical path is longest path on a line. which has to be which has to be um, project uh, to to complete project on due date that path you cannot expect any delay on that it is longest path in your chain so and and uh, let me tell you one more point the best and easiest method to identify the critical path is you will not find any float or slack anywhere in critical path so you can see the activity right from a b d e the zero is the float okay so it is 6 11 18 23 it is going like this whereas here you have yes two two uh, days float here two days float here that's why it is not critical path because you still have two two days slack 
therefore the critical path is a b d i hope you could understand how to calculate how to determine the critical path critical path will not have any float or slack on, on the path and it is longest in in the range so that this is the longest okay and though here we have some slack still we can wait for two days to start next next activity so we have already identified critical path now let me tell you since we calculated some slack so let me tell you total slack and free float or total float so when i'm saying the total float for this whole sequence is four we i have two days here i can save two days here i can save two days here so it is going total four days okay whereas when i'm talking about free float so free float of activity c is two days because without delaying this i can still wait for two days without uh, um, uh, impacting the late start of successor activity so i hope you could understand the difference between total float total float or free float you could identify the critical path if you want any explanation on this just drop me a comment message in comment box i will get back to you as early as possible so this this was too easy to identify the critical path your critical path does not have any float or slack just drag the line and your critical path is identified and total float this plus this and free float only this or this so this is okay i hope you could really understand that and if you have any question or query just come back to me thank you very much subscribe to my channel aman watts and stay connected for further explanation on various aspect or topics of project management